Hello, my dear friend. This is Alan Bag, and we're on the Wisdom for Life broadcast. Today, we're going to continue with this awesome study on how we can be led by the Spirit of God, how we can hear God's voice. We've been having a look this week and see how God has given us promises from His Word that as sons of God, we are led by the Spirit of God. Remember Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So when we are born again, children of God, we have the right and the ability to hear God's voice. Remember Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep know my voice and I know them, they follow me. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Get a hold of that. Jesus said, my sheep, that's you and me as believers, is Jesus your great shepherd? Then he says, as his sheep, you hear his voice. And we've seen already from using examples from the Word of God that people in the Old Testament heard God speak to them. We see under the New and the Better Covenant that we are able to be led by the Spirit of God. And we've used the example that you are watching this program on television. You are seeing the signal because you tuned into the station. Now, if this television set that you're watching on wasn't tuned in, you wouldn't see me speaking to you, and yet I would be speaking at this moment. So the fact that you've tuned in means that you can hear me speak. And so God is speaking to us all the time. Jesus said we hear His voice. But sometimes what I hear, I may not even realize that it is God speaking. Because if I don't know how to hear, and I don't know what to expect to hear, then I will have missed what He said. So I'm going to go on the knowledge that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So that is something we just make a quality decision to receive by faith. Even if I don't think it so, even if I feel like it's not happening, I make a decision. If Jesus said, I hear his voice, I hear his voice. So make that a faith statement right now with me. Just say this, Father, I thank you. According to the words of Jesus, he said, I hear his voice. So by faith, I receive that, I hear your voice. Amen. Now, what does that sound like? How do we hear his voice? We got an insight to that. If you have a look at Matthew 16, Jesus was having that discussion with his disciples. Remember, he said, who do men say that I am? And he called himself the son of man. And then they started talking about reincarnation, about other prophets coming back. But then Jesus got down to verse 15. He said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered in verse 16 and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. So he's saying here that he's blessed, number one, because it's not flesh and blood that he's relying on. Number two, that he heard this voice from God. He heard the Father speak to him. But now I want you to notice, Jesus didn't use the word here. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but by my Father who is in heaven. So Peter had this revealed to him. Revealed is different to hearing the way we traditionally think of hearing. Uh, the traditional understanding of hearing is there must be a sound. And so the same way when Jesus came out the waters of baptism, they heard God speak audibly that day. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But there's other examples in the Bible where God did speak and some people around there thought it thundered. So it just was like a loud noise, a boom or something. And they didn't hear the detail of what God had said. Sometimes it can happen. Some people hear, but others didn't. Like in the Old Testament, when Eli was talking to Samuel, Samuel heard God calling, but Eli didn't. So he realized God was speaking to him personally. Now, what I've noticed over the years is that the majority of Christians don't hear the audible voice of God. Usually it's for direction. It's for specific counsel, uh, specific instruction for a call. Then I'll hear say somebody say, I heard God's voice audibly. But most times it's this leading within the spirit. And so we're going to have a look at that. How can I position myself 
so that I can hear God's voice clearly within my spirit. Well, the first key is to practice the presence of God. And what do I mean by practicing the presence of God? If I'm not aware of God's presence all the time, and sometimes as believers we think, well, I do. I, I know God's always with me, never leaves me nor forsakes me. Now, that may be true, and I know that God is my God. He's always with me. But am I constantly aware of His presence? A way I can quickly understand or reveal to me if I'm not sure if He's in my presence or not is when I start to think other things or start to get involved. I mean, every one of us have been tempted to sin. And the example I like to use, let's say there's a cookie jar here full of biscuits and that, and we know we, we shouldn't be eating that cookie, and then we quickly check over our shoulders to see if anyone's watching, and we're going to go try and take a cookie. Well, the point is, if I'm checking over my shoulder to see if anyone's in the room, I'm still locked into the natural. See, if I'm aware God is with me, then I'll be far more aware of how I live my life. I will make sure that I'm not involved in any form of sin, because if I have to be tempted to sin, and then distracted to into the action of sin. At that moment, we almost have to push God aside, like we're not even thinking about Him. I found out the quickest way to resist sin is to put my eyes back on God and say, Father, I know you with me. You never leave me nor forsake me. Holy Spirit, you are guiding me. You're helping me out of the sin. I resist this temptation in the name of Jesus. What's happening? I'm practicing the presence of God. I want to make sure that I'm always aware of God. I speak to Him all the time. When I wake up in the morning, I want Him to be the first one that I say good morning to. Father, this is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And so when I make that decision, God is with me. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. And then through the day, I involve Him in all my decisions. So if I'm about to do something, I'm going to go, Lord, I'm about to do something here. Is this okay? Is it okay? Can I go ahead with this? And you will sense a peace and a presence of God in your life, and you will know, yes, this is, this is accurate. Sometimes when we're about to make the wrong decision, you may get a check in your spirit. It may be, you know what? I don't think I should be doing that. It's like maybe I reach for the phone. I'm going to make a phone call, and I'm going to close this deal. And as I reach for the phone, I feel this this grittiness, it's like a check in your spirit. It's almost like a grinding. It's, uh, some people describe it as like losing your salvation. Now we know that as long as we serve God, we're not going to lose our salvation. But it's like, my God, it's just this void, this emptiness. And then I realized I was about to make a wrong decision there. And so I immediately put the phone down, go back to the presence of God. Father, thank you. I hear your voice. I believe you lead me, you guide me, show me, and there's a peace. So making that phone call was going to hurt me. I don't understand always where or how it's going to happen, but I've learned to trust that. I can tell you there's examples in my life where many times I had a hunch, you know, that <laughs> we use that I, uh, something told me or sixth sense. I, I just knew I was doing something. And as I was going ahead with it, I heard the Spirit of God saying, stop, slow down, and I didn't. And the result was something went wrong in my life. Something bad happened. And I could think back. I went, oh, that was the exact moment I knew I was not supposed to go ahead yet. And then by doing that, by continuously being aware of that and always practicing that, you get to a place where you say, okay, I'm hearing Him. What I heard there that was the voice of God. That is the leading. That's that knowledge within. That's that revelation that I have within me. See, we, we read last time, we had a look at James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. If I want the wisdom of God, all I need to do is ask for it. Think about that. The one who knows everything, the creator of all life, the creator of everything that exists, all knowledge and wisdom lives within you as a born again child of God. 
That's why we pray from Colossians 1 verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, then ask that you be filled with all the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Why? So that your walk may be worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. So you and I want to live our lives according to the will of God. I don't have to wonder what that will is. I don't have to guess what that will is. His will has been imparted into me. So the one who knows everything, maybe you're facing a situation in the office or in your investments or in your marriage, and maybe you've even said something like this, I don't know what to do. I want to rephrase that. I've learned to say, I've learned to train my, my mouth, my voice. I will never again say, I don't know what to do. If it slips out, I say, I don't know what to do. But you know what? I believe God does know what to do. And He lives within me. And if He knows, I know. And that's what I want to do. Make that my confession. I don't want to ever again say, I don't know. I may not be aware of what to do right now, but I do know it. Why? Because the one who does know it lives within me. And if I know the one who knows, then I know. <laughs> so if I know the one who knows and I know, all I have to do is ask. And that's what James is saying here, ask. And so I may say, Father, I'm aware of you. You are my God. I'm about to make a very important decision here. Now, it maybe seems like it's right and everything makes sense. All my advisors say it's correct. The news is saying it's correct. Everybody's saying it's time to go ahead with this. And I listen, I say, Father, I need to hear from you. I need your final say. What am I doing? I'm practicing His presence. I do it right through the day. Whenever I'm about to do something, every moment you have, share with God. You see a beautiful sunrise? Just enjoy and say, Father, I love your creation. Look how beautiful the sunrise is. You made that. You get me. You did it so that I can get to enjoy it. And I'm enjoying it now with you. Be aware of His presence. Practice His presence all the time. When you're talking to somebody and maybe someone's being a little horrible or, or, or hurtful or saying something ugly or spiteful, just rest and say, Lord, I know you for me who can be against me. Don't try and get angry and back at the person and get aggressive. Practice the presence of God. In His presence is the fullness of joy. When we hide under the shadow of the Almighty, that's where the blessing is. That's where the glory is. And so I want to always be in the presence of God. Practice the presence of God. And that leads me to point number two, is that expectancy is the key to receiving. Think about that. For us to receive anything from the body of Christ, anything from the Word of God, anything from the kingdom of God, it has to come with a previous expectancy. Expecting to receive. Remember, when Peter was walking past that cripple at the gate beautiful, he looked at them expecting to receive. Now, he was obviously expecting money, but there was an expectancy. And what Peter did is readjust him and said, silver and gold I don't have with me, but what I do have, I give you. Now, pick up your bed and walk. He readjusted his expectancy, but until there was expectancy, he couldn't have received. Remember the woman with the issue of blood, Mark chapter 5, how she said, if I can just push through this crowd and I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. It was an expectancy. So she pushed through that crowd and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. He stopped and looked around and said, who touched me? Now everybody was touching Jesus. That's why there was, what do you mean who touched you? You're in a crowd. So everybody is trying to touch Jesus. He's the famous man. He's the savior. He's the healer. He's, I want to shake his hand or just pull on his garment or just whatever. And they were touching, bumping, moving down the crowd. Next moment, he stops because something happened. They said, but what do you mean who touched you? There's, everybody's touching. He says, no, I felt power flow out of me. Somebody took something here. And this woman now, she's been exposed and, uh, you know, according to Jewish tradition, she shouldn't even be in the crowd there because of the flow of blood. But Jesus addresses her and says, what's happening here? Why are you here? So she tells a whole story and then says, if I could touch you, I'd be made whole. And Jesus said, woman, your faith 
made you well. Your faith. What's that faith? It was that expectancy. Jesus is the healer. I mean, it was his power, his healing, his anointing. Without any of that, she wouldn't have been healed. But the power only flowed because she expected it. And so that's why I keep saying expectancy is the key to receiving. If you want to receive anything in the body of Christ, it's expectancy. Remember, Jesus came into a city one day and there were crowds all coming out to see him. I mean, the streets are packed. But there was one man who climbed the tree, Zacchaeus, and Jesus looked up at him and said, I want to come and have lunch with you today. There was someone who stepped out the crowd, expected, and they got their answer. So what am I saying? I want to live and cultivate a love life with God where I'm always aware of His presence and I'm constantly expecting to hear. Now, I may not always hear the direction of God, but I'm always expecting for it. Father, what do you want me to do here? And that's why I, I use for the smallest of decisions, I will practice the presence of God. Sometimes, you know, uh, <laughs> we kind of joke around whether would God tell you what color tie to wear? No, those aren't big decisions. I don't need God's advice on wearing color tie. Uh, but sometimes I'll even ask my wife, I'll say, which one do you like, the blue one or the red one? And she'll look at the two and she says, I prefer the blue one. Well, then I'll wear the blue one because I want to bless her, please her, have her involved. I can choose the color of my tie. It's not like that's a major decision, but that's what a relationship is. And so sometimes I'll do that with God. I'll say, which one do you prefer? And I mean, he doesn't always have to answer me, but I'm practicing that presence. I'm practicing and I'm expecting to hear. I want to know what God thinks. And so when it comes to major decisions in my life, I don't want to get to the place where all of a sudden I need to hear God's voice. See, when you're in a relationship with someone, you recognize their voice. Think about this. Uh, any parent with a child, those children could be on a playground with hundreds of children. But if your child shouts out, maybe it got hurt or something and it screams, there's something in you where you even subconsciously, before you're even aware it's them, you hear that voice. You can hear my child, you can hear your child shouting through a crowd of people. Hundreds of voices, but that one clear, distinct voice. Why? Because you know it. You've spent time with that child. I know for me and Janine, I remember when we first got married, I used to like to play jokes on her. This was before I was even saved. I'd try to phone and prank call her, and I could do anything I like. I could try and muffle the voice, change my voice, do anything. We were just two young kids having fun with each other. And every time I tried, doesn't matter how serious I got or how serious the situation was, she could hear me and she said, Doll, I know that's you. I can hear it's you. I was thinking, well, how can how that possible? I mean, I've changed my voice and everything. See, she wasn't listening for the sound. There was that relationship. She could hear the personality. So by spending time with God, trusting Him in all the little things, let Him lead you, direct you in the smallest of matters. And by listening to the smallest of matters, you are continuously aware of His presence. You may think this is God. This is how I used to learn. Sometimes I think, well, that must be God. I, I, I think that is God. And then I go ahead and make the decision. And then it didn't work out the way I expected. It hurt me. It broke. It, it was the wrong decision. I don't go back and say, but God told me. I don't understand this. No, I heard wrong. It wasn't God. It was my mind trying to make it sound like God. And you, if you're honest with yourself and you keep training yourself, you go back, okay, that wasn't God. And then next time I, I listen, I hear that. I think, no, that's my own head. I'm not listening to that. I'm trusting God. Then I hear His guidance. And then I make the decision. And this time it's a wise and it's an accurate decision. By doing that regularly, yes, no, yes, no. No. Successful? Not successful. Eventually you start to realize you can very quickly learn, that's my voice. No, that's the devil. That's trying to influence me. I take that voice captive to the submission of Jesus. I punish that as disobedience. And then you'll eventually get to a place where you start to hear. Now you're hearing more successfully. And it takes time. But by developing that, you develop the process and you train your spirit man 
to discern what's happening. You fine tuning, you fine tuning, you're cutting out all the clutter, all the noise, all the distractions. And by doing that, you're getting to a place where you become more and more sensitive to God's voice. So I want to encourage you to do that today. Make a decision. Just celebrate God's presence. Make a decision in everything that you do. Involve God. Make a decision to listen for His voice. And I know as we do that, it'll take you closer and closer. Now, I've got another key I want to share with you tomorrow. And we'll get back to that. But other than that, I've got something else I want to share with you. I'll see you after this. Did you know that God speaks to us every day? Would you like to hear His voice and have every question answered that needs answering? God is speaking to us all the time. No matter what decisions you need to make, God wants to help you make wise decisions that will help you succeed in life. Which tells me I need to be able to hear Him. In this new series by Dr. Alan Bagg, you will learn that you have an awesome ability not to only recognize God's voice, but also hear the voice of God so that He can guide you into the abundant life Jesus paid for us to have. God wants to tell me because His desire is for you to prosper. His desire is for you to succeed. Contact us at these details. Order your series today and learn to recognize and follow the voice of God's guidance toward a successful future. Hearing God's voice can literally be the difference between failure and success, the difference between lack and poverty and prosperity. See, God has great plans for us, and He's guiding us. And sometimes we can hear things that we know, know we may need to do in the natural, and yet that natural plan can still end up being a failure because of a circumstance I wasn't even aware was going to happen in my future. But God is giving us insight into that. He can tell you exactly, if you're going to join that company, then maybe that company is going to go bankrupt. So you must rather go look for a job somewhere else. And God will lead and guide and direct you to that. So how do I hear that? So that I can succeed in everything that God's called me to do. This is an eight-part series where I teach how you can not only hear God's voice, how you can be led by Him, but I also give instruction and guidance, coaching literally from my own personal life using the Scriptures from the Word of God. And when you hear it, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. As you go through each one of these different CDs, eight parts in total, by the end of it, you will be hearing God's voice and He'll be guiding you and directing you and you'll be able to hear it so that you can fulfill what God's called you to do. So get yours today. Now, the greatest call you can hear is the call to salvation. And God's using me today in your life. He is the one that's calling out today to say, come home, give your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never yet done that, but today is your day. Right there where you're watching the program, why don't you pray this prayer with me now? Say this, Dear Lord Jesus, say it out loud with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. You gave your life for me. You died for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you my Lord. You are my Savior. Today I'm born again, a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, my friend. If you just prayed that prayer, you are a child of God. I have a gift for you. This is a card that's going to explain to you what's happened now that you are a Christian and some guidelines for your life as a Christian. Uh, this is a card that will help you study through your Bible in a year. And then this wonderful CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure Into His Kingdom of Victory. I want to sow that into your life. It's a free gift from us to you. Please call us on that phone number or write to me at that, that address. And when we get your details, we'll send that to you. And we'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, that's all we have time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. At alanbagministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. 
you will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Back Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello, my friend. My name is Alan Bag, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. At allenbagministries.org, we will help you to connect with Alan Bag Winnie Ministers in your area. So keep a close eye on his itinerary for up and coming events in your area. If you would like to get hold of some resources taught by Alan Bag, browse our online shop for some faith building material that will help you further your knowledge on the many topics available. On occasion, there are also some great promotions and free study programs available. On our website, you can find out how to get involved as a partner or even find out more information about partnering with Allen Bag Ministries. You can also make use of our easy to use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. Allen Bag Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, you are now able to purchase this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details. Choose